Here is one of my eBay stores that generated over $35,000 in sales this year. And here is the massive amount of traffic that I'm bringing into this store. Now, I have more stores just like this one, like this store here with over $14,000 in sales. And I've been doing this for over seven years now. But the question is, is dropshipping on eBay still possible in 2024? And that's exactly what I'm going to be going over in this video. Not only that, I'm also going to be providing you with an eBay 2024 dropshipping cheat sheet with everything that you need to get started and make your first sales and profit. I guarantee that this is the best and only eBay dropshipping video that you will need for 2024 because I'm leaving it all out on the table, all of my years and experience, everything that I'm doing so that you can replicate the same techniques and start your own successful eBay dropshipping business. And the best part is you can do this from anywhere around the world, even with a starting budget of zero dollars. You do not have to spend money until you start making money. And I'm going to show you how. Not only that, be sure to stick around until the end of the video, because throughout this video, I'm also going to be throwing in bonus winning products that you can start selling right away. I've got the list right here and I'm going to be sharing this throughout the video like this product right here, where we can see this eBay seller selling this magic wand house for $57. He already sold eight units. He's got almost 60 people watching this product and he's buying it right here for almost half that price. So for less than $30, he's shipping this out to all of his buyers. So I've got more winning products just like this one that I will be sharing out throughout this video. So be sure to stick around and let's go ahead and get started. For those of you who are completely new here, dropshipping is a business model that allows you to have an online store, sell products and send them out to your customers without holding those products in stock. So you're not investing upfront in inventory. You have an online store, you list products for sale using your dropshipping suppliers. And only once you make a sale, will you go to your supplier, purchase the product and send it to the end customer. The dropshipping business model has been around for many, many years and it's continuing to grow exponentially year by year. It's not going anywhere and it's definitely not too late to get started. Now, if you want access to this cheat sheet with everything that I'm about to show you, all you have to do is like this video and comment hashtag eBay 2024 and I will reply to your comment with the link to this cheat sheet. But stick around because there is so much to go over and so much to learn. So what are some of the best things about dropshipping? being on eBay, let's go over the pros and the cons before we dive into it. So one of the things that I love about eBay is that you can literally start with zero dollars and you won't have any expenses until you'll start making sales. This platform has millions of online shoppers with an intent to purchase. That means that people are opening up eBay because they want to buy something. They'll search for something on eBay search field. And if you are selling something similar to what people are searching for, they're going to get to your listing and purchase. So because eBay has millions of online shoppers coming in every day, this this platform offers you free organic traffic to your listings. As soon as you list a product, it could start selling even if you didn't put any marketing efforts into it. Next, nowadays eBay offers 250 free listings to get started and that's why it makes it easy to get started with zero dollars as a budget. So you can start listing 250 items for sale and you will not be upgrading your store subscription until you start making sales. We're going to go over all of that soon. And it's really easy to start selling on eBay. You don't have to create a store from scratch. You don't need any technical skills just register and list your first product next eBay has many free marketing methods those of which I will show you in this video you can sell from anywhere around the world and as I mentioned no technical skills required some of the cons or disadvantages of selling on eBay is that eBay will limit you to the amount of listings that you can sell especially if you haven't sold before and you just created a new account but I will show you how you can overcome this and get high selling limits Next, you cannot collect your customers' emails on eBay. So when someone orders from you, eBay will keep their email address so you won't be able to send out email marketing promotions to them. But there are very effective marketing methods that I will go over. And lastly, verification for new sellers. So if you haven't sold yet on eBay, you're going to have to go through a verification process, all of which I will show you how to do it the right way so that your account will get verified and you can start selling from day one. All right, so let's get started and register our new eBay account for selling. Before we do that, if you are new here, I'm Leon, the content manager at AutoDS. And if this is the kind of content that you would like to see, head over and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have many more video tutorials on how to get started dropshipping, what products to sell, case studies, interviews of 
of other successful dropshippers and so much more. And here are all of the topics that we're going to go over in this video, not including all of the golden nuggets that I'm going to throw out inside this video. So we're going to start off by registering our eBay account. We're going to list our first item. We're going to go through eBay selling limits, store subscriptions and selling fees, business policies for shipping and returns, shipping and selling preferences, finding winning products to sell. And this is a really, really important part of it. Products to avoid selling on eBay, eBay dropshipping suppliers with fast shipping. We're going to go over the best suppliers there importing products to your eBay store so that you can actually start adding products and start selling, marketing and promotions, ways to get more traffic to your listings, free and paid methods, order fulfillment because at this stage orders will start coming in, dealing with cases and returns, dealing with flagged accounts, maintaining a high eBay seller level and automating and scaling our business. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's go ahead and get started with step number one. So before we register our eBay accounts, we first need to figure out what region we want to sell on. There are several regions that we can choose, including eBay.com, which means that our domestic audience will be in the US, eBay CO UK, which is eBay UK, eBay DE, which is eBay Germany, eBay France, eBay Italy, Australia, Spain, and Canada. So those are all of the regions that we can sell on. In this example, I'm gonna keep it on eBay US because that is where I'm selling. So the first step is to actually register for your account. So go to the region where you want to sell, for example, ebay.com. Then we're going to click on register on top. Now, I don't need a step by step on how to register an account. You just need to fill in all of the information as you can see it right here. And basically what eBay is looking for is your full name, your address, your date of birth, your social security number if you live in the US. It doesn't matter if you want to sell to the US and you don't live in the US. Obviously, you don't need a SSN number there. So that is for an individual account. And then you also have your business account. For the business account, you'll need to fill in the business name, your registered business address, phone number, registration number, and tax information. Now, if you're wondering if you should start with an individual or a business account, the answer to that is it really doesn't matter. You can start with an individual account in the beginning. And as you start to make sales and scale, you can transfer that to a business account later on. Or you can start with a business account right away if you've already registered your business. Now, regarding business registration and taxation and all of that, we're going to get to all of that in this video. But it doesn't matter if you're going to start with an individual or a business account. After we register our individual or business, account, we need to connect our eBay account to manage payments. Now, if you live in the USA, eBay is going to send out your payouts directly to your bank account. This means that when someone buys from your eBay store, eBay is going to collect that payment and they're going to send it directly to your bank account. And if you live outside the USA, eBay is going to connect you with Payoneer, which is a virtual bank account. So they will send the payouts to Payoneer and from Payoneer, you can withdraw the profits to your bank. So this is going to be the next part after registering to your eBay account. You're going to have to connect your account to manage payments. And I've got the resources right here below to teach you exactly how to do that and this is what it's going to look like in the end and under here in your financial summary you can see exactly what's going on with your payouts how much money ebay is holding at the moment and when they're going to send it out but we're going to get to all that later if you need help with that use the resources below how to create an ebay seller account and how to connect pioneer to ebay managed payments you have the links to it in the cheat sheet and again if you want access to this cheat sheet just comment below hashtag ebay 2024 let me know what you learned in this video what is your top takeaway and I will send you this cheat sheet in the comments below. So after we registered our eBay account, it's time to list our first item. And the first time we list an item, we want to do it completely manually from eBay's website. The reason for that is because we want eBay to see us as a brand new seller selling things that we have laying around the house. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And the reason for that is if eBay sees that we are reselling right from the start, they could temporarily suspend our account and want to get to know us by phone, by chat or by email before verifying our account and letting us sell. That's because they want to get to know their sellers first. And the easy way to bypass that is to start by selling items that we have around the house. So here, for example, I'm going to list these pens up for sale. Now, if you have a new product that's still in its original package, it's even better. You can still sell used products, but if you have something that's closed, start with that. So we're going to go to eBay and we're going to create a new listing. And the first thing you can see here is tell us what you're selling. So here it's these colored pens, right? So I'm going to write colored pens and here we go. Colored pen set. So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to click on this search button. Now eBay is asking, is this the product that you want to sell? Because they want to know if they should add us to some buy box. Only in this case, I'm going to go with continue without match because that's simply not the product and we're not going to enter any buy box. Select the condition of your item. We're going to go with new. 
And here we're going to start to fill in the information. We're going to upload some images of the product and make sure that you're not going to write things like subtitles, which is optional, which is going to cost us $2. We want to do it for $0. And as I mentioned, eBay right now is offering 250 free listings to list right from the start. So this listing is going to be one of those 250 completely free. So fill in all of the information, the product information, how much you want to sell it for, and you'll also need to create your shipping policy. Now I'm going to go over shipping policies soon, but in this case, make sure that the shipping policy shows that it's being shipped out from your current location. This is not going to be the case for once we start drop shipping. And that's pretty much it. Once you're done, preview your listing, make sure that it looks all right, and then go ahead and click on list it. Then you'll have your first item up for sale. Now, again, the recommendations here are to sell an item that you have laying around the house, preferably a new item rather than a used one. Make sure that it's not a copyrighted or trademark product. And just for the start, don't sell from the electronics category. This is one of the main tips that other people will not talk about. You can definitely sell electronics once you'll start drop shipping. But if your first product that you're listing is from the electronics category, that's going to trigger another red flag for eBay to just temporarily suspend your account so that they can verify your information by phone. Now, I'm not sure exactly why that is because I've been selling electronics for years now, but one of my first few stores got suspended when I started with an electronics product. Now let's go over eBay selling limits, because as I mentioned, eBay is only going to allow you to list 10 items or $500 per sales right from the start. And if you can see, I took the screenshot from one of my eBay stores. I've got a 4,000 limit on quantity of items and $130,000 limit in product listings and sales. But again, new account selling limits will be 10 items or $500. Now there is a way to bypass this by purchasing eBay stores that are up for sale that already have lots of limits. But for this, you're going to have to find a marketplace like Flippa to search for eBay stores that are up for sale or to simply find agents who connect between the buyers and the sellers. But if you don't have that starting budget, you want to start off on your own, you're going to start off with 10 items or $500 in sales. So what exactly does that mean? This means that if you list one item, then you'll only have nine items left. And if that one item costs $100, then you're going to have $400 left. So it's going to be nine items and 400 instead of 10 and 500. And when someone purchases that product, that also counts as your monthly limit. So this means that from nine items, if somebody purchases one of them, you're going to go down to eight items and $300 instead of 400. So that's just an example. The items you list and the items you sell will both be counted into using your monthly selling limits. Now, once your limits are completely full, you can ask eBay to increase your eBay selling limits. Now, I have an article linked inside the cheat sheet that will show you how to increase your eBay selling limits. This is the article right here. You can learn all about selling limits, how to check it, see where you stand, see what the prerequisites are. And as you can see right here, you want to get to this point where you listed all of your 10 items, you used up all of your $500 so that now you can list zero more items, zero dollars in amount. And this is the perfect time to get eBay on the phone or by chat or by email and ask them to upgrade your limits because you already used them all up. So if we go back to my eBay selling dashboard, you can see my monthly limits right here. Now these monthly limits refresh every month. So when you list a product, when you list an item on eBay, it's going to be there for 30 days. And after 30 days, it's going to keep refreshing itself. So when it refreshes itself, that's when it's going to count as another item that you listed or sold. So when the item refreshes every 30 days, if you didn't take it down, then it's going to be counted as another product that you listed. And and when the month is over and you're starting a new month, that product is not going to count as a product that was listed until, of course, it's 30 days or over again. So I don't want to jump into this now because you have all of the explanations inside this article on eBay selling limits. But basically what you want to know about eBay selling limits is that you want to fill up your selling limits before trying to upgrade it. Make sure that you have no open returns or cases, things that we'll jump into later. Your seller account needs to be in good standing and you have to have a verified managed payments account as we did when we registered our eBay account. Those are the prerequisites. Once you have all of that in order to increase your limits, the best way is to get an automatic limit increase by eBay, like this screenshot that I took from one of my emails that I got from eBay. So you can see right here, hi Liron, congratulations. You've been doing a great job selling on eBay and we've noticed. How would you like to list even more? Now you can. Here's how much you can list now every month. So from 370 items to 710 and from $9,500 to $18,500. This was just one of my automatic limit increases. Of course, there were more that came to it. In order to get these emails from eBay, 
you actually have to start making cells and your limits need to be around the full zone. So it's going to be around orange or red instead of this green that I just showed you right here. So that is one of my limit increases. The best way to do it is to get automatic limit increases. But if that does not happen from eBay, you can simply request to list more. So back to my eBay dashboard, you can see that I've got this button right here, request to list more. I can simply click on it and you can see it says request higher selling limits. Here are some ways to get more items on eBay. Select one to continue. I've only got verified through customer support. I'm going to click on continue and that is how you can request a higher selling limit. And the third way to do it is to simply get eBay on the phone, on email or on chat. Now, the most recommended method is by phone. The reason for that is because if you do it through email or through chat, they're gonna start a 30 day timer before you can actually make the same request. So if you get them on email or on chat and they told you that they will not increase your limits at the moment, you'll have to wait 30 days before making that request again. However, by phone, if for some reason they said no in the first conversation, you can call them up again five minutes later. You'll talk to another representative. They won't know about the previous ones that you talked to because in most cases, eBay will not check phone history logs. So it's better to do it by phone. It's the most effective method. And you can learn exactly how to do that by reading this article on increasing eBay selling limits. So don't want to get into it now. You have all of the information that you need inside this resource. Next, let's go over eBay store subscriptions and selling fees. It's important to understand understand exactly what our expenses are, how much we're going to pay and when we're going to pay it. And I did mention that we're going to start with a budget of zero dollars and I stick to that. However, if we do not understand how to select our store subscriptions and do it the right way, we're going to end up spending money even though we don't really have to. So here's everything you need to know about store subscriptions and selling fees on eBay. So how much does it cost to dropship on eBay? The first thing that we need to take into consideration is the store subscription fees. There are store subscriptions that we will need, but only later on once we start making sales and profit. I will go over that soon. Then there are insertion fees. Every time we list a product for sale, there is an insertion fee. However, I did mention that we have 250 free insertion fees that eBay is giving us right now. And after that, we're going to create a store subscription, which will give us even more insertion fees included in that package. Then we've got our final value fees. This will only have to be paid once we actually make a sale. So again, there are no final value fees until we actually make a sale. Then we've got promotional fees. Promotional fees are promotions that we are running, marketing methods, which I will get to later. And that, of course, will come with its fees. Now, some of these promotional fees will only have to get paid after we make a sale and some before. So again, I'm going to go over all of that soon. But here's what we need to know about store subscriptions. So we've got a starter store, a basic, premium, anchor and enterprise store. Those are the five store store subscription tiers that we have on eBay. And we do not need to start with a starter store because we're going to get that absolutely for free. And I will explain that soon. So the starter store gives you 250 listings that you can sell. So 250 insertion listings and every additional listing on top of the 250 will cost an additional 30 cents. Now, because I mentioned that today eBay offers 250 completely free listings, we're actually getting the starter store for free. So that again is written right here. Beginner's tip. eBay is running a promotion on 250 free zero insertion listings. Therefore, there is no reason to purchase a starter store. Now, after we fill up those 250 listings and we want to move up to a thousand listings, we're going to need to purchase a basic store, which is what we're seeing right here, which costs $28 per month or $22 per month if we're going for an annual subscription. And if I head over to the subscriptions on one of my eBay stores right here, and we can see here that I've got the pre premium store build at $60 per month because I'm going for the annual subscription. And as you can see, it refreshes every year. So the last time it got refreshed was in December 2022. The next time it's going to renew is on December 1, 2023, and it's going to change to December 1, 2024 and so forth. So I'm going for the annual subscription because I've been here for a while. I'm here for the long term. And so will you be after watching this video. So I showed you that I'm paying for the premium store right here for the yearly renewal of $60 per month. I don't want to pay $75. I could have been doing that for years, but I would, but I would have been throwing away $25 every month for years now. So of course, I'm glad that I'm doing the annual subscription. And that is the premium store right here. That's giving me 10,000 listings per month and 10 cents per additional listing. Then we've got the anchor store giving us 25,000 listings and the enterprise giving us 100,000 listings. However, it is really important to mention that if you used up all of your 250 listings and let's say you're making some sales and profit, you know what? Let's say you're not making any sales and profit yet with those 250 listings. That means that your product research is wrong. And that is one of the things that we're going to touch up later on this video. And it's one of the most important parts. That's also why I'm giving you all of these 10 winning products for free, but I'm also going to show you how to find these products through product research. But let's say you filled up your 250 listings 
and you're already making some sales and profit and you want to move it up to a thousand listings now just because you passed 250 and you're about to move over to 251 that's not a good time to move from a starter store to a basic store because as i mentioned the starter store is free but even if it wasn't you'd be paying five to eight dollars per month and the basic store costs about 16 dollars more on the annual so you're going to be paying 22 dollars or 28 dollars for a basic store up from zero dollars because you got 250 free listings in the starter store so if i want to have 251 listings i'd rather pay 30 cents for that extra one listing rather than pay 22 dollars or 28 dollars for a basic store so you need to find that sweet spot when is the right time to move to the next store once i used up my additional listings i want to know when is the right time to move to the next store so for that in the resources in the cheat sheet below you have the ebay insertion fees calculator so you'll know when is the best time to switch between store subscriptions let me give you a quick demo of how that works so this is the ebay insertion fees calculator and here you just need to give the basic information for example what store subscription do you have now a non-store a starter store so let's say we've got the starter store right here we've opt-in for managed payments and we want to list 251 items the total cost here is 30 cents why because we got 250 for free and each additional listing will cost us 30 cents so for example if we want to list 300 items that's going to cost us 15 dollars in this case we still want to keep it under the starter store because we're only paying 15 dollars for the 50 additional listings that we listed over 250 However, if we want to list 400 items, that's going to set us back $45 in insertion fees. And in that case, it's better to have a basic store and pay $22 or $28 and get 1000 listings that we can list under that subscription. So this will help you find that sweet spot of when it's time to move on to the next store. And that'll happen around 340 listings. Once you're around there, it's time to move to a basic store because that's pretty much how much it costs you. Only now you'll have a thousand listings that you can list and not just 340. So use the eBay fees insertion calculator to know when is the right time to move to the next store. All that's provided Provided to you inside the eBay 2024 cheat sheet, which you can have once you comment eBay 2024 in the comments below. Let me know what you loved about this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, I will send you a link to this cheat sheet under your comment. So we talked about store subscriptions. We understand when is the right time to actually pay for a store subscription. Once we actually start to make sales and profit, we're going to invest our profits into the next store subscription and list more items for sale. Remember, we're not here to list 10, 20, or just hundred products. We need to list thousands and thousands of products in order to make a substantial amount of sales and start raking in those profits to our bank accounts. In order for that to happen, we will need a store subscription later down the road. Now we learned about store subscriptions. Let's Let's talk a little bit about final value fees. I mentioned that every time you make a sale, you're going to have to pay eBay a final value fee. And I've added more information to that in the cheat sheet below. But what you need to know here basically is you're going to have to pay a percentage of the category fee, depending on the category that you're selling on, and another 30 cents per transaction, plus an additional international selling fee if you're selling internationally. And that means, for example, I'm selling on eBay US, so my domestic audience is inside the United States. And don't worry, I'm gonna to talk to you soon about how you can open up all of your listings to the worldwide audience. But in this example, I'm selling on eBay US, and I do not live in the US. That means that I'm an international seller. It doesn't mean that I'm selling internationally to the whole worldwide market, but it means that I do not reside in the country that I'm selling in to my domestic audience. So that's the international selling fee. And now let's break that down to understand exactly what our fees are so here are the category fees for the final value fee you're going to pay a fee percentage per category plus another 30 cents per order as i mentioned so here for example let's say that we're selling under the jewelry and watches category this means that we're going to pay ebay a 15 percent fee for any product that we sell up to five thousand dollars and most of your, our products are not going to be sold for over five thousand dollars so we will not go down to nine percent we're going to pay a 15 percent transaction fee so if we're selling a watch and it sells for a hundred dollars on ebay we're going to pay ebay a 15% category fee, which means $15 out of those $100 are going to go to eBay plus another 30 cents, which is a fixed fee that we're paying per order. So as I go down the categories, let's say you sold a shirt. So that goes under clothing, shoes, and accessories. So in this case, eBay is going to take an 8% category fee. If the product costs over $150, if it costs less than $150, then it's going to be 13.25% of the total transaction. Plus, of course, that extra 30 cents. In the case where it costs $150 or more, you can see that they're waving off that 30 cents per order fee. But in any case, that is small money. I'm going to talk about break evens and how much you should be profiting soon. But when drop shipping, especially on eBay, the profits are high. And I'm going to 
to show you an example soon of some really high profitable products that I've been selling, including a sale that I just got this morning that has over $50 in profit. Okay, so we went over store subscriptions and selling fees. The last thing to know about is the international selling fee, which I talked about. And here we're talking around a 1.5% average uh, selling fee to add on top of your final value fees. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. Of course, you have all the information inside the eBay cheat sheet, as well as a link to an eBay fees calculator. And this will help you understand what your break even is and how much you're going to profit on every product and every order. So this is what the eBay fees calculator looks like. And as I scroll down, I can just choose whatever category I want to sell on. So for example, if I'm selling under jewelry and watches, I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to click on international payment because I'm an international seller and I've got an eBay store subscription. Let's say I want to sell something for $19.99 and it costs me $9.99 and no other shipping or promotion costs. In this case, I'm not going to make the difference, which is $10 between them. My profit is actually going to be lower. It's going to be around $7. And that's because I have $3.11 in fees or about 15%. And that is pretty much my break even. And that's what's going to help you understand what your break even is and how much you can price your products. Again, all of the links inside the cheat sheet. Now let's talk about eBay business policies. We still have much more things to go over, including product research, how to optimize our product listing so that we'll end up on the first page on eBay and therefore get more traffic and sales, how to process our orders and so much more. But before we jump into business policies, let's go over winning product number two. As I promised in this video, I'm going to go over these winning products. I'm going to throw them in randomly. So let's go over winning product number two i already showed you the first one in the beginning of this video which was that magical house now check out this one and this gives you an example of how much you can profit when selling on ebay and i'm not even showing you my sales yet which i'll show you soon so check out this product right here so this seller is buying it on aliexpress for three and a half dollars plus another almost eight dollars shipping so let's say about uh, 11 12 dollars total product price and here he's selling it for almost two times that price at 30.99 or $31 and he already sold seven units and he's got seven people who added this to their watch list. Now, I'm also going to show you this cool hack where you can actually see when these sellers sold these products. So I'm going to show you that soon. But in any case, we can see the total here and that is another winning product. This is a wild bird feeder. This is what it looks like. Again, this is the supplier. This is where he's selling it on eBay. And this is the drop shipping business model. You buy low, you sell high, you keep the profit in the middle. That's winning product number two. Now let's continue with the video. So eBay business policies, what exactly does that mean? eBay business policies lets your buyers understand what your shipping policies are, or in other words, how fast you can ship, what the return policy is, do you accept returns and under what conditions, and what the payment policy is, which is pretty simple because we're all working with eBay managed payments. So I don't wanna dive into this too much because I'm making this video longer than it has to be, and I still wanna to get to the good stuff, but in any case, you have everything inside the eBay cheat sheet, including the links to set your eBay business policies. You have an example of what the USA shipping policy needs to look like if you are selling from and to the USA. So for example, I'm using one of my USA suppliers, and of course I'm gonna go over all of the dropshipping suppliers soon. So let's say I'm working with a US supplier and I'm shipping to the US. So it's from and to the USA and I get pretty fast shipping. So in this case, I'm going to set one to three business days for my shipping services. I'm going to offer free shipping and the handling time is three business days, or in other words, how long it takes me to provide a tracking number once the order is inside the system. So I'll show you what it looks like inside my eBay account, but I just want you to see the other shipping policies that you can get from the cheat sheet. So there's also the China shipping policy. So if you're shipping from China to the USA or to worldwide, you're gonna choose the economy shipping from outside the US, which is around 11 to 23 business days. And the handling time is gonna be around five business days. Now, if you can find sellers from China who can provide a shipping label within one to two days, then you can go with a up to three day handling time, which is better because if you have handling time that's over three business days, like four and five and so forth, as you can see here, eBay says buyers will be notified of the longer handling time when they view your item. So that kind of decreases your chances of selling. Doesn't mean you're not gonna make sales, but you could make more sales if you would have faster shipping. So let me show you an example of what that looks like. So as you can see on my eBay account, here I can create a new shipping policy. Okay. So give it a name, for example, USA shipping. And here in the services, just make sure not to choose a specific shipping carrier like USPS or FedEx or UPS, because then the tracking information will have to come from them. So in this case, I know that I have a supplier that ships quickly from and to the US. So I'm gonna go with expedited shipping, which I can find right here, one to three business days. And my handling time is up to three business days. Above that is excessive and not typical. 
as I explained a minute ago, and I'm gonna offer free shipping. Now, even if my supplier charges me for shipping, I'm not going to charge my buyers for shipping because I'm using AutoDS, which is an all-in-one automation platform. I'll talk about it soon. And this is gonna help you automate and scale your business really easily so that you can invest your time in opening more stores and continuing to grow your empire or just spending more time with your friends, family, and loved ones. But in this case, because I'm going to add these products through AutoDS, AutoDS has an option to grab the supplier's shipping price and add it to my source price so that for for example, if the product costs $5 and shipping costs $2, it's going to see that as $7 as a source price. And this way, on top of my break even, it's going to keep my profit percentage that I want so that I can offer free shipping to my buyers because that's already included in my source price. So that is how to set your shipping policies really quickly. Right now, I'm not going to leave international shipping on. I'm going to explain why soon. And we're going to exclude all of the other locations because they're simply not relevant because we simply want to ship to the USA. That's just for this example, if you want to ship to the US. Then I'm just going to click on save and this shipping policy will be created. Then when I add products to my store, I can set that as a shipping policy or if I'm using other suppliers with other policies, I'm going to create a policy for them and choose that policy when I upload those listings. Then you've also got the same thing for the return policy. And regarding international shipping, I've got two links here in the cheat sheet below, how to make your eBay listings available for global shipping using the integration between AutoDS and HipShipper, as well as eBay's international shipping program. So what this means is instead of just shipping to your domestic country, for example, the USA, I can actually ship my products worldwide. And this way, everybody around the world can see the product and purchase it. This is going to get me more traffic to my sales and of course, more sales and profit. So those are the two ways to make it happen through HipShipper or through eBay's international shipping program. The similarities between them is that I'm going to be sending the product instead of sending it to my customer in New Zealand, for example, I'm going to send it to a, a warehouse in the middle that's actually going to take care of shipping the product to New Zealand or wherever my customer is. So HipShipper and eBay, they both have their own warehouses where you can ship the product there and they will take care of shipping it to your end customer. The reason that I use HipShipper and not eBay's international shipping program is because I enjoy automating my business. I want everything to work automatically while I travel, while I sleep, I want things to work. And in order for that to happen, I use AutoDS with HipShippers integration. More information about that, of course, inside the eBay cheat sheet. I'm not gonna get into it now on how to set it up. Again, it's very simple and you've got a video explanation inside the cheat sheet. And same goes for eBay's international shipping program. If you wanna join that, you can simply click on the link there and read more about it. So now about the return policies. Am I going to accept returns and what are the conditions? So mainly if your supplier that you're working with is giving you free returns, let's say for 30 days, then you are also going to accept returns from your buyers. You wanna be able to offer the best service that you can so that people will not only wanna purchase the product, but also come back and purchase again and again, or refer their friends and their family to also buy from you. So the better service we can offer, the higher the chance that we're going to make more sales and profit. So for this, for example, if we're getting 30 days for shipping, we're going to accept returns allowed within 30 days. The return shipping will be paid by either the buyer or the seller. So depending if your supplier is going to give you free shipping, you're also going to offer free shipping to your buyer and the refund method, money back or replacement. And you have the same thing for international returns. So here I'm going to create a new return policy. So I'm under returns. I'm going to click on create return policy. And here I can give it a name like free USA returns and here i'm going to accept returns allowed within how many days 14 30 or 60 and again the return to be paid by the buyer or the seller and the refund method money back or do you also want to offer a replacement instead of money back and same goes for international returns do you accept them will you accept them and under what terms in my case i accept international returns within 14 days not 30 and the return label to be paid by the buyer instead of the seller my domestic returns are on 30 days the return label is to be paid by me by the seller i'm not actually paying for it because i'm getting it for free from my supplier and i offer money back or replacement for the international shipping i allow 14 days the return shipping will be paid by the buyer because it's international and the refund method will just be money back. I don't want to send any replacements if it's international and they requested a return. Now, don't worry too much about returns. It usually takes up around one to four, maybe maybe 5% of your business. And if your returns are 10% or more, you should check out your products, see what's wrong with them and replace them with better ones. And lastly, the payments policy setup. This is actually very simple because you'll only have pretty much one option if you're working with eBay managed payments. And that's pretty much what we're all working with at the moment. So you just create a payment policy from the business policies page that I link to. And the only thing that I advise there is to not accept cash on pickup, check or money order. Only toggle in require immediate payment when buyer uses buy it now. That's it. We're not creating auctions. We're only creating buy it now listings and we want them to pay immediately. Once we get paid, as I mentioned, we're going to process the order using our dropshipping suppliers. All of this 
which is going to be explained soon. The next thing that we want to configure before we start selling on eBay is the shipping and selling preferences. So again, we've got links to it inside the cheat sheet. Guys, if you want access to it, once again, comment below, hashtag eBay 2024. Let me know what your top takeaways from this video. What did you learn? And I will reply back with this cheat sheet. Along the way, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you appreciate the value. Okay, so let's continue. eBay selling preferences. What we want to configure here is the return preferences. This is because we need to turn the RMA number on. And this is so that we can manually upload a return label if somebody opens up a return instead of eBay sending the buyer an automatic return label with our address as the return address. Now, if you don't want your returns, if you don't want your products to end up on your door and you will not get refunded by your supplier and you'll have to send a refund to your buyer if you don't want that to happening, be sure to do this. So I'm going to copy the link and show you how that is done. So here is the selling preferences page. And here under return preferences, we want to click on edit and we're going to scroll down all the way and make sure that RMA number right here is on. Give me the option to add an RMA or a return authorization number to each return label. And again, this means that when a buyer opens up a return, you'll have the opportunity to upload your own return label instead of eBay doing it on your behalf. And the product will again end up in your house and you don't want that. And the second thing is under multi quantity listings, you want to turn on listing stay active when you're out of stock and buyers can see exactly how many items are left. So again, that is under the selling preferences right here under multi quantity listings. So you want to toggle both of them on. So a listing stayed active when you're out of stock. If a product goes out of stock, then eBay will not deactivate that listing. If they deactivate the listing, we'll have to relist it. And then we will not have the sales history that we had on that product. So we want to keep the out of stock on. And with AutoDS, I'm going to show you all this stuff soon. We're going to use the item quantity of one. And what happens here is every time we make a sell and the quantity goes down to zero, AutoDS will automatically bring it up back up to one. And you will not lose the sales history because eBay kept the listing active even while you're out of stock. Being active doesn't mean that someone will be able to purchase it. They won't be able to purchase it, but it'll say that the item is out of stock instead of a message that the listing is now ended. And buyers can see exactly how many items are left. So if you have one left in stock and it's sold and the stock goes down to zero back up to one, eBay will show this message only one unit left and this will get the customers to actually want to purchase because there's only one left and they don't want to miss out on that. So that kind of creates this rush feeling and it's a good thing to have. So that's what you want to do under the selling preferences page. And we've also got the shipping preferences page. Now what you can do here first of all is to enroll for eBay international shipping if you want to do so. I talked about that earlier. You can simply do that by clicking on enroll right here and you've got the rest of your shipping settings. Now you don't really need to touch this because it pretty much gets configured when you're creating your shipping policies and if you connect with international shipping everything here will be moved automatically to the other shipping policies and everything here will be edited accordingly. So you don't really need to touch anything on the shipping preferences unless you want to enable eBay international shipping. And as a resource, you have a video on how to set up site and shipping preferences for dropshipping on eBay, which is pretty much what I just went over in a summarized fashion. And now let's finally get to the good stuff. How do we find winning products to sell? In other words, product research. This is one of the most important parts when starting and running our dropshipping business, because no matter how many hours of work you put into building your store, if you are not selling the right products, you're simply not going to make any sales. So you want to be able to know what to sell and narrow down on our winners so that we can continue multiplying our success by adding more products similar to those that are winning more variations while continuing researching more categories, more evergreen products, and of course, seasonal products as well. And before I get into that, I'm going to reveal winning product number three. As I promised in this video, I'm going to be pumping them out slowly. So let's see what is winning product number three before we jump into product research. So winning product number three is these licking mats, lick mat for dogs and cats. So yep, that's exactly what it is. It's a nice pet item and it works well with both cats and dogs. So this seller sold 11 units and you see this last item available. This is why I mentioned in the site preferences, to have the buyers can see exactly how many items are left toggled on because this creates that rush feeling that I was talking about and this is what you want to see. I can tell that this guy is also a drop shipper because he only has one in stock and after it sells it's going to go down to zero then back up to one again so that this last item available will always show. So he's selling this licking mat for dogs and cats for $9.99. He sold 11 units so far and we can see that he is shipping from the United States. So now I could use Chinese suppliers and especially new ones like Timu who's selling this 
product for $4.08 with free shipping, but they're shipping from China. And if I want to compete with someone who's selling from the US, I need to use a US supplier. In this example, we can use a retailer like Amazon. And I'm going to talk more about retail suppliers, wholesale suppliers, and even hook you guys up with private suppliers that no one else is working with so that you'll really have the upper advantage. But let's just take this as an example. Amazon here ships from the US. It works with Amazon Prime. So this product is going to be shipped and delivered within one to two days. And it costs $4.88. So while the profit potential here is not very high, it's just a few dollars. He already sold 11 units and he is complying with what Amazon can give him. So in this case, he's going to give 30 day free returns because that's what you're getting through Amazon Prime. And the seller will pay for return shipping because you don't have to pay for returns when you're using Amazon Prime. So that is another winning product. Check out the pets category. And soon I'm going to go over some of the best categories to sell on. But again, that is winning product number three. Let's continue with finding winning products. Now there are several methods of finding winning products to sell on your store. And I'm gonna go over my top favorite methods, those of which I'm still using to this day. And my number one method today for finding winning products to sell on my eBay store is using the AutoDS winning products hub. Let me show you exactly what that is. And if you don't have a budget aside, this only requires $1. Now I know I did tell you that you can start with $0 and I still stick to that because I'm also gonna show you product research methods that don't require a budget. But for a $1 trial investment, I really think that it's worth it with everything that you're gonna get around that. But let's talk specifically about the winning products hub. This place is full of winning products that's being updated every day with more and more products that are trending right now. Not products that trended two years ago and today they're not selling anymore. I'm talking about trending products that are in demand right now. So all of these handpicked products have a full product analysis showing you what's selling, who's selling them, how much they're making, what marketing methods they're using and more. Let me show you exactly what it looks like from the inside. So here I am on AutoDS. I'm going to click on winning products right here on the left side. And here you can see a huge list of winning products. So as I scroll down, let's take a look at, let's say, this baby development toy right here. Okay, so I'm going to click on the product and here I can get more information like what other variations are available, where it ships from, the shipping time. But don't worry, even if you're seeing 17 business days, I'm going to talk about shipping time soon and how you can improve them even when you're selling these products. So we've got some more product information like it's being sold for $40 and it's being sourced for just $2.79, leaving you with a potential profit of over $35. And you can also see the seller's ad copy. So you can see someone who's selling this product. Now on eBay, we're most likely not going to be running these types of Facebook ads. I'm not doing it on my stores. You can do it on yours. I know others who are doing it, but this does give you a little example of how much this product is trending. So here, for example, we can see that it got over 3000 likes, over 640 comments and almost 350 shares. So it's a pretty popular product. And we can see the seller's website right here. We can click on the link to get to it. And we've got audience targeting, which again, we don't really need unless we're running eBay PPC campaigns, which I will talk about soon when we get to the marketing section. But what I'm trying to get to here is you can see that the products are trending. You can see that they're popular and you can simply add them to your stores by clicking on this import draft button right here then it'll go to the drafts page of my AutoDS account I can optimize the titles descriptions everything else and then I can import it to my store and start selling it within a minute after I saw it on the winning products platform so the winning products platform is going to take all of the shortcuts we did all of the hard work for you our database is updating all of the time with these hot new trending products now I did mention that the AutoDS trial does cost a dollar and there's also an add-on as you can see right here for the winning products hub however I guarantee that you're going to get a return on this investment from your profits when you're selling products from the winning products hub. Now you can also use that as an example. You can see these products and then search for more products that are similar to them using other dropshipping suppliers, all of which I will talk about soon. But that is my first go-to for finding winning products. It'll save you hours, days, weeks, and months of research. If you wanna do all of the manual research all by yourself, it'll consume a substantial amount of time, all of which you could have saved for just a few bucks per month. But let's put that on the side. Let's say you still don't have that budget. Let's talk about the completely free methods that will consume more time because that's just the way it works, but you can and will still find winning products using these free methods. And that is the sell these now YouTube playlist. So again, you've got all of the links to all of these methods in the cheat sheet comment, hashtag eBay 2024. Let me know what your top takeaways from this video and I will send you a copy of this cheat sheet. So here we have the sell these now playlist. And again, it's being updated all the time with new and fresh products to sell. So I'm not gonna go over it now. You've got tons 
tons and tons of videos, new products being updated several times a week with hot trending products. That's a YouTube playlist, doesn't cost any money to watch those videos, and there's so much value that you can find there. The next is live product finding Q&A events that you will have with yours truly. I will have a live conversation with you, I will answer all of your comments, and I will share with you top strategies and winning products to sell on your stores. There is a lot to learn from, from this playlist. And if you wanna sign up for the next live Q&A event to learn more about new fresh winning products and also have the chance to talk with me live, just click on this link, register to the next live event. Of course, registration is absolutely free. These live events are absolutely free. You have a countdown timer for the next live event. Just leave your name and email address so that we'll send you an invite and a notification when the live will start. And the next method is the AutoDS TikTok Spy. And this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna click on TikTok Spy under Marketplace. And here I can find lots of TikTok ads or lots of TikTok posts that are showing trending products. In this case, what I can do is filter, for example, videos that got over 20,000 likes. And in the call to action button text, I'm going to go for shop now or order now or visit stores so that I'll actually see people who have dropshipping stores. And here, for example, I can get all kinds of product ideas. For example, this cat litter product right here. Okay, so I can just click on the call to action right here and I can get more information on this TikTok post, including what the impressions are, when the ad was first seen, and I can also click to see the original post on TikTok. So as we can see, this is the post right here. It got over 46,000 likes and we can just go to the user's profile, click on the link in the bio and see how much they're selling it for. So that's going to give you lots of more winning products that you can sell that are trending right now at this very moment. Now the next method, and again, we're back to free methods, is the product finding blog articles. Now I know that I'm throwing a lot of methods at you. You need to choose which one fits you best, but believe me, this is more than enough to start finding your first winning products and continue scaling from there. So the product finding blog articles, just like our videos are being updated all of the time with fresh new content. For example, 20 best selling auto parts, which we just published the other day, top 10 winning dropshipping products to sell on a specific month. And as I continue scrolling, you can see more and more like the best dropshipping drones to sell, the top gaming products, UK dropshipping baby products. So for example, if you wanna sell on eBay UK and you wanna be in the baby niche, this also has many good products. And I can just click on show more and continue scrolling more and more. For example, if you want to go to swimwear products, if it's right before the summer, it's a good time to read this article on the top swimwear products. And again, the list goes on and on and it's being updated all of the time. And I recommend reading this article under our blog. This goes over some of the best eBay categories and some of the best products that you can sell today. For example, once you start drop shipping and you can sell in categories like the electronics niche, which as you can see right here is raising exponentially every year in e-commerce sales. Some of the best products that you can sell here are smartwatches, wireless earbuds, recreational drones, wireless charging pads, Bluetooth speakers, VR headsets, portable power banks, home security cameras, gaming headsets, and smart thermostats. Then you've also got automotive parts, for example, headlights, tail lights, car floor mats, performance air filters, car phone holders and mounts, and so forth. Then you've got the home and kitchen, which is a great evergreen niche that's selling all year long. For those of you who are wondering what evergreen means, there are evergreen products and there are seasonal products. Evergreen are those that are selling all year long and seasonal products sell during a specific season like Christmas or summer. And these usually have higher peaks than the evergreen, but they also drop as soon as that season is over. So it's good to have a good combination of both evergreen products that will sell all year long and seasonal products that will have a higher peak in sales when those seasons arrive. So under kitchen and home, we've got wall art, artificial plants, throw pillows and blankets, coffee makers, air fryers, stand mixers, smart kitchen scales, and more. Pet supplies is another great category for dropshippers. And here we have some stats showing you what's going on every year in terms of dropshipping sales. And here you have products like harnesses, leashes, cats and dog beds and caves, automatic pet feeders, pet grooming brushes, pet monitoring cameras, chew toys, and more. Then you've also got sports and outdoors, and you pretty much get the point. I left a link to that of course, in the eBay dropshipping 2024 cheat sheet. I told you what you have to do in order to gain access to it. Let's continue to the next product research method, which is utilizing Google Trends and Google Lens. I'm not gonna dive into it too much right now because I do wanna move on to the next steps, talk about suppliers, talk about orders, talk about how to add these products and how to sell them. And I also wanna share with you some of my recent sales on my eBay store. But as you can see right here, we can use Google Trends to understand what products are trending right now. You have a full blog article and an embedded video inside 
so that you can understand exactly how to utilize Google Trends to find winning products. And you've also got Google Lens. This is a way to kind of do a reverse product research by finding a product on one website and then using a Google image search as this image shows to find other people who are selling this product. This way you can find who the supplier is and which other stores are selling this product and for how much. So Google Lens is also gonna get you another great idea of finding websites and their suppliers. The next is to simply search suppliers bestseller pages. For example, I can just head over to Amazon and I'm gonna talk about suppliers soon. So if you wanna use Amazon, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons there. And of course, other suppliers like private suppliers, as I mentioned. But here, for example, let's just go to the bestseller section because I want to learn about some of the bestsellers. But I do want to stay away from copyrighted and brands like I cannot sell Super Mario and things like that. I'm going to go over what you cannot sell soon. But let's go into a category that we know works well. For example, pet supplies. So I'm going to click on pet supplies and I'm going to go, for example, for dogs. And here I can get some ideas of products that are selling well. Let's say I like this dog bed here. OK, let's say I want to see what dog beds are selling in particular. So I'm not just going to add this dog bed over here because it's probably oversaturated over 32,000 uh, reviews on this one but I do want to check out other ones so I'm going to do a general search okay for dog beds so I'm slowly starting to narrow down my product research and as we can see we've got all of these listings here the next thing I want to look at and this is a relatively new thing that Amazon just added on I'm going to try to zoom in as much as possible so that you guys can see it well is Amazon tells you how many people purchased this product in the last month so here, for example, we've got this washable dog bed, which sold over 10,000 units in the last month. Okay, it's also got great reviews, so we know it's a good product. This dog bed right here sold over 50 in the last month. This one right here sold over 5,000 in the last month. This one over 10,000. So you can kind of get an example of which of these products are actually selling well. And yes, you can add this product from Amazon and sell it on eBay. There are some pros and cons to it, which I will get to soon. But at the end of the day, your customers will not care where their packages are coming from. So if a customer is ordering something on eBay in an Amazon box, 99.5% of them will simply not care as long as they got what they ordered and they got it on time according to your shipping policies. So use this feature, go to the bestseller section, see what products are selling well, then do a broad search on them and see which of them specifically are selling. Okay, this is gonna give you another good indication of how to use bestseller sections and that's just one example on Amazon. You can use many different suppliers, those of which I will get to soon. Then you've got eBay reverse product research. Okay, this means you can simply go to eBay and you can see what is selling well there for other sellers. For example, here I can search for dog beds, just like we search for them on Amazon. Now we can also search for them on eBay. And here, for example, I can find a listing, for example, uh, this one right here that costs, oh, this one is pretty expensive, $200. Let's see what's going on with this one. So let me just choose a variation. All right, so this dog bed right here. Now here, for example, I can use the power of Google Lens, as I mentioned. I'm just going to right click on the image. Then we're gonna click on search image with Google. Now I can find other websites that are selling this product. For example, I can see it right here on Amazon. Let's see how much it costs there, $175. It is a very expensive product. And here it's being sold for $195. So of course it's a little bit more expensive on eBay because this person is drop shipping the product on eBay. And this is how you can do a reverse product research on eBay. Find the product that's selling on eBay, then use Google Lens to find the supplier. That was just a quick 30 second example. But when you dive deep into it, you'll find more and more products and even those that have a higher profit potential than what I just showed you. And so I talked a little bit about this eBay sales history hack where you guys can see when the product sold, not just how many times they sold. So let me show you exactly how that works. We've got the information right here in the cheat sheet. What we're going to do is copy this link right here under the eBay sales history hack. Then we're gonna find a product that's selling on eBay. So let's take this example right here, this dog harness. Okay, I can see that it sold almost 18,000 times, but I wanna see how many times it's selling. So I'm just gonna copy the link right here to the eBay selling history hack. I'm gonna put it right up here in the URL. Only instead of the X's right here at the end of the URL, I'm going to copy the item ID from the listing that I wanna spy on which we can see after ebay.com slash item slash we've got a number. So I'm just going to copy that number. That's the item ID. And I'm going to paste it right here instead of the X's. And I'm going to click on enter. Now I'm going to enter that product and understand exactly when it's making its sales. So as we can see right here, this product is selling several times per day. So we can see here the quantities. So the last buyer bought two units. Then we've got one, 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 and one. And we've also got what variations are selling. So what colors this one sold uh, camouflage then yesterday we had a whole bunch of sales on pink camouflage and camouflage black red ocean blue camouflage and so forth so this helps you understand 
how often these products are selling and if they're still selling today. Use this eBay sales history hack. You've got the link in the eBay dropshipping cheat sheet. So enjoy that. And the last product research method that I want to talk about is simply using eBay Terapeak. This is already included inside your eBay account. Doesn't cost any money to use it. And I've got a blog article that shows you exactly how to take advantage of eBay Terapeak as well as embedded videos. We embed videos inside our blog articles because some people simply like to watch and some people simply like to read. And so we like to give you both options so that you can really choose whatever method you like to start learning. But basically what eBay Terapeak does is it gives you insights on what categories are selling well right now. So let me just go to my eBay account and this, this right here just shows some traffic that I'm getting on one of my stores. So we can see right here that I've got almost 1 million impressions in the last month, over 5,000 page views. You can see the quantity sold, how many of those impressions are organic impressions, how many are promoted. And I can also compare it to previous periods right here using this gray line. So here, for example, the blue line symbolizes the organic impressions, how many people are getting to my listings 100% organically by simply searching for something and whatever they're searching for is inside my eBay title. So I didn't do any marketing methods to get this traffic and the green line is promoted listings. I'm not paying for that unless I'm making sales. I'm going to go over all of that soon, but let's see exactly what eBay Terapeak is. So I'm going to hover over research and I'm going to click on Terapeak product research. So you can see that this store right here has 2,518 positive feedbacks. And what I'm going to do is on the left side, I'm going to click on Terapeak sourcing insights. Okay. I can do product research to search for a specific product and see how it's selling. For example, you can see right here that there's a great opportunity to sell inflatable mattresses and air beds. They show you how many people are searching for this, how many active listings there are, the search to listing ratio, meaning there are not enough active listings selling these products when compared to the amount of searches. So there's more demand than supply that's why they see that as a great opportunity to sell and the sell through rate here is crazy 8.2 percent sell through rate that is very high way above the industry average and i just clicked on it to get more information on that and here they're going to share with you all types of listings that are selling well or that are getting lots and lots of traffic so you'll see exactly what types of these inflatable mattresses or air beds are selling well so you can also use ebay Terapeak, which is once again included inside your ebay account to find winning products to sell. Okay, so that's a little bit about product research, but those are the best methods to use so that you can quickly find your winning products and start selling, if not on day one, then on week one of dropshipping on eBay. So now that we have a wonderful overview of product research and what products we can sell, let's talk about products that we should avoid selling so that we'll know exactly what categories we can actually dive into. So products that we want to avoid reselling on eBay to avoid the risk of account suspension are copyrighted and trademarked items. So don't sell any Thing that was manufactured by big brands that you've known like Apple, Samsung, Sony, etc. So while you cannot sell an Apple iPhone, what you can sell is the case for the Apple iPhone if it was not manufactured by Apple or by any other big brand. So for example, you found an iPhone case using one of your suppliers. You want to write that it is a case for the iPhone and not an Apple iPhone case because then they'll think that Apple created that case. So stay away from copyrighted and trademark products, but you can sell accessories to them that were not created by those big brands. Then you want to avoid age restricted products. So no pornography, no alcohol, no tobacco no drug paraphernalia and so forth. Next, stay away from dangerous goods. We're not gonna sell guns, ammunition, flammable liquids, choking hazard toys, and anything that is simply dangerous. No knives and no medicines, vitamins, and supplements, okay? We are not doctors and we cannot resell these things. And another little beginner's tip for you, if you're dropshipping with AutoDS, you don't really need to worry about these things because every time you try to add a product that you're not allowed to resell, you will get flashed with a warning message along with the reason why you cannot resell that product. And if you want to go ahead and resell it any way you can, but you will get a warning message and our database is updating all the time with new products that got patented or that you are not allowed to resell. So that is another extra layer of protection with a blog article on eBay Vero, how to avoid copyright infringement. Vero stands for verified owner rights. And this is simply products that you cannot resell. It gives you more information about that. I'm not going to go into it now, but you've got the blog article if you want to read and watch. Now let's talk about the best eBay dropshipping suppliers that we can work with. This is as important as products product research. So we found winning products that we want to sell. And now we want to find someone who we can actually list these products from and sell them so that when we get an order, we can forward that order information to those suppliers and fulfill those orders. 
Plus, we want to know what our prices are and where we can actually buy these products if we can actually resell them. So eBay dropshipping suppliers with fast shipping. Now I put an extra focus on fast shipping because it's really important nowadays. Okay, we want to find suppliers that can ship quickly. Like this screenshot right here shows some suppliers from the AutoDS warehouse in this case that can ship within a couple of weeks, which is how fast you want to ship. Customers do not want to wait three to four weeks to get their products. They want to wait one or a maximum of two weeks. And we can even make it much shorter than that. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. The things that we wanna focus on when looking for a dropshipping supplier is those that can offer quick shipping and delivery times, I just explained why, good return and replacement policies, for example, try offering 30 day returns. So finding suppliers that have 30 day returns, pretty soon I'll show you them. Fast and reliable customer service because the better service you're gonna get from your suppliers, the better service you'll be able to pass on to your buyers. And of course, we all want to give the best service that we can because we want these buyers to buy from us time and time again. Then we want to look for suppliers that have a wide product range. Okay, we want suppliers that have thousands of products that we can resell. And even if we're not going to sell all of those thousands of products, we always want to be able to have a large choice of products so that we can do our research right and find winning products. Then we want to look for suppliers that have high quality products. So it's great that you have a million products, but I need them to be in high quality. I don't want to deal with returns. I don't want to deal with replacements. And I don't want to deal with mad customers or sad customers complaining that we're selling low quality products. And lastly, we want to find suppliers that offer competitive product prices. Now, this should go without saying, but the better prices we get, the better prices we'll be able to offer, which substantially increases our chance of making more sales. So knowing what to look for in a dropshipping supplier, let's go over the list of the best dropshipping suppliers that we can use today. And on top of the list, I cannot start without talking about the AutoDS marketplace and the private suppliers, as well as retail suppliers, all within the AutoDS system. And what this means is everything in your business is going to be automated when you're working with suppliers that are supported by AutoDS, whether it's importing products within a matter of seconds, single products, multiple products, order automation, better customer service, fast shipping, and so much more. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. This is what the AutoDS marketplace looks like, but I'll actually show it to you inside the system. One of the best things that it can offer is not only does it have the retail suppliers like Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, and all of that, there's over 30 of those retail suppliers. You also have private suppliers, which is much better for eBay, and you also have customized branding. Now, this is one of the things that only AutoDS members can have. Your orders can get sent out with your customized logo on them. This way, you can easily build a brand and get customers to know and remember your store. I'm going to show you all of that soon. There's also the AutoDS warehouse. So not only do we have private suppliers, but we also also have our own warehouse where we can ship really quickly and other things that I will not get into now. But let me actually show you what it looks like. So here is the AutoDS marketplace and we've got a whole bunch of categories right here and I can choose all kinds of filters like where I want to ship to. So if I'm selling to eBay US, I'm going to choose United States, United Kingdom for eBay UK, Germany for eBay Germany and so forth. You can also choose what currency you want to use and where you want to ship from. So for example, let's say I want to ship from the US and into the US to get even faster shipping times. Okay, then I can also select the supplier. So it can either be retail suppliers or I can go for special AutoDS suppliers. Okay, let's go for that and see what types of products and suppliers we have inside the marketplace. So here, for example, we can see this massage gun that's been trending a lot in the dropshipping scene. And we've got this private supplier named Nori Ma. Now, this supplier can ship this product within six to nine business days. And if I click on it to get more information, I can also message this private supplier. Okay, I can negotiate with them. I can see what other products they have and I can get customer service and more things. So you have one-on-one -on -one access to these private suppliers. And of course, more product information. As I scroll, you can read more and more about the product and import it to your store in just a click by clicking on this import draft button right here. Okay, so it ships quickly and that is one private supplier that you can work with. And here we can see more private suppliers like Dropship Friendly, LLC, and the AutoDS Warehouse. And you see right here where it says customizable branding. This means that this product can be sent out once again with your customized logo. And this is really special when it comes to dropshipping because dropshippers do not invest in inventory upfront. We only sell after we make a sell. So usually we cannot reach out to a supplier and be like, hey, can you brand my product with my logo before you send it out? Even if I'm only sending out one unit, the supplier will be like, no, you have to have a minimum order quantity of 50 units or 100 units if you want me to brand them. I'm not going to brand them one by one. That's just not very cost efficient for me. But with the AutoDS private suppliers, that is simply not the case. So wherever it says customizable branding, you can send out this product with your customized logo, which makes it even more special. So you can see this message right here, create your customizable branding on this product page. 
I can click on add now and put my logo right here. Once I do that, this product will be sent out with my logo when I get a sale on it. So that's one of the biggest advantages that we have here, along with all of the rest of the private suppliers selling trending dropshipping products that you can find right here in the marketplace. Now, this AutoDS marketplace is included inside your AutoDS $1 trial investment, which is one of the best $1 you can ever invest. And I hope that it goes without saying when I'm showing you all of these things that you're going to get along with that. OK, so get access to all of these private suppliers within your $1 trial. So that is my first go to when it comes to what dropshipping suppliers to use on eBay. Then we've also got retail dropshipping suppliers. Now, there are over 30 suppliers that you can use here but you do have to learn how to work with them for example you can see aliexpress amazon banggood cj dropshipping walmart home depot and tons and tons of other suppliers some of the new suppliers that just joined are macy's kohl's shane catch and timu timu is what's known to be the next aliexpress killer because they give 90 day free returns let me just show you what their website looks like and as we can see right here free returns within 90 days and every order's return is absolutely free so this is something that really changed the game when it comes to drop shipping from china and you've got lots of trending products right here so this is just another example of retailers that you can work with and you can also filter by the warehouse location so for example let's say i only want to find suppliers that can ship from the us because i want to ship quickly to the us i'm just going to click on usa right here and here i've got all the suppliers who have warehouse is in the US so I can ship quickly to my domestic audience. Now the thing here that we need to know is that not every retail supplier is going to be dropshipping friendly. For example, AliExpress is super dropshipping friendly as is Alibaba, as is Timu and other suppliers that we have here. But other ones like Amazon, mm, not so much. Now I've been dropshipping on Amazon personally and professionally for also for over seven years now. And I know many other dropshippers who use them, but you do have to learn how to do it the right way. Because once you put down five, 10 orders per day under one Amazon account shipping to multiple locations, it's a matter of time before Amazon is going to lock that buyer account. And then you'll either need to open more or use Fulfilled by AutoDS, which I will talk about soon. So there are workarounds to everything. CJ dropshipping for example is also super dropshipping friendly but you'll have to know how to work with these suppliers if you don't have any experience with them try one for example but you'll slowly want to start moving to more suppliers always work with multiple suppliers so that you won't put all of your eggs in one basket if one has a stock issue if one is maybe going out to some chinese holiday for a couple of weeks and now you cannot issue orders from them you can move to the american supplier or any other warehouse that you're using so it's always good to work with multiple suppliers and of course all of these suppliers the retail suppliers the private suppliers in AutoDS, the marketplace they're all supported with AutoDS dropshipping automation all of which features I will go over soon. So AutoDS Marketplace and private suppliers and retail suppliers, your first go-to for dropshipping suppliers. And to be honest, it's more than enough, but let's go on with the rest of the list. We've got a Timu dropshipping article. So if you wanna learn how to use Timu as they're completely brand new to the scene, we've got a full blog article on how to do that. And I've also broken down this list to niche dropshipping suppliers and location-based dropshipping suppliers. For example, you have an article on the best jewelry dropshipping suppliers pet dropshipping suppliers, clothing dropshipping suppliers, dropshipping gifts in the UK suppliers, dropshipping clothes in the UK suppliers, candle dropshipping suppliers. So some of these are niche, as you can see, some of them are based on locations, print on demand for Australia suppliers, medical supplies. And of course, as I mentioned, it's a very sensitive subject to dropship, but you can learn how to do it the right way in this article. Lingerie, if that's the niche that you want to go for, Australian suppliers, Florida suppliers, Canada suppliers, and so forth. So you have a full list of these suppliers. And if you just click on one of them, again, you'll have a full blog article, a full video, on what are the best suppliers under this niche or under this specific location. Okay, so I'm not gonna get into it now because again, it's more than enough. All of this list completely available to you in the eBay dropshipping 2024 cheat sheet. Again, hashtag eBay 2024. Let me know what you learned in this video or what is your top takeaway? And I will reply back with the cheat sheet link. So now that we went over product research, which is super important and finding the suppliers that we wanna work with, that we wanna sell these products from, now it's actually time to add these products to our stores and start selling. We already created our eBay accounts. We already upgraded our selling limits. And I can also give you a quick tip on how to do that if you're going to open a new account. Remember how I mentioned that you can only list 10 items or $500? So what you can do, instead of listing 10 different items that you have laying around the house, you can just list one item and update the quantity from one to 10. And also the price is going to increase because you're not just selling it for $50, for example, because once it's times 10, 50 times 10 is 500, and then you'll fill up all of your limits with just one listing. So you can do that through eBay's listing editor, as we can see right here. I can just move the quantity from one to 10, 
and change the price to $50. And this way I've listed 10 products with a total of $500. And then I can simply call up eBay and tell them, look, I've used up all of my limits. I've got so many more products that I wanna sell, so please upgrade my limits so that I can do that. And that's gonna make it much, much easier for you. So here's how you can do it manually on eBay. Just edit your item listing. Or of course you can do it through AutoDS by opening up the variation settings and changing the selling price to $50 and going to general and changing the quantity from one to 10. So 10 times $50, that's 10 items, $500 taking up all of your limits. Okay, so that's a little tip on how you can do that. And now let's get to actually importing these products to our stores. So again, there's a long way of doing it by going to eBay, clicking on listings, clicking on create listing, and then following through step-by-step, step, downloading all the images from your supplier, uploading it to your eBay account, and so forth and so forth. But we're not gonna do that. We are here for automation. So here's my AutoDS dashboard. This is one of my stores. You can see that it made over $1,000 in profit in the last month. And this is just one of the plenty stores that I have. But let me show you exactly how we can add these products to our stores. So if I'm grabbing the product from the marketplace or from the winning products, you just have to hover over the product and click on import draft. But of course, you need to first connect your eBay store to AutoDS. So go to AutoDS com and here you can register for one dollar for me it says go to my account because i'm already logged in but you can do it right here on the top right after you create your account you'll need to add your store so you're going to click on add store you're going to click on ebay store click on continue and then just continue with the connection process it takes less than a minute and it's pretty much a breeze once that happens your ebay store is actually connected and now you can start adding products really quickly by again hovering over clicking import draft if you're getting it from the marketplace or winning products but let's say you're doing it not from the private suppliers not from the marketplace not from the winning products let's say you want to do it from one of the retail suppliers that we talked about here and add their products to your store so here's exactly how you're going to do that in this case i'll just take amazon as my example even though it really doesn't matter which supplier you you use here so let me go to amazon and i'm going to go to one of the categories that are selling really well on one of my stores which is string lights okay and i want to add those that are actually getting a lot of sales in the last month like this one right here that got 6,000 sales in the last month so one of the ways that i can quickly add this is by simply hovering over this icon right here this auto ds extension icon this icon is the auto ds chrome extension Okay, I'll also leave a link to it inside the cheat sheet. And it's completely free to use. So download and install the AutoDS dropshipping helper. And it's gonna look like this. You can also see it as this circle right down here. And when I hover over, I can just click here so I can import this, import this, import this really easily, just like that. Okay, I can also enter inside the product listing. And after I enter, you'll notice an import to AutoDS button right above the title right here. So I can also click on this. And if you have multiple stores connected, you can simply click on the extension right here and choose which store you want the importer to use while you're clicking on the import to AutoDS button. You can select one store or multiple stores. The third way to do it is simply copying the URL up here, going to AutoDS, click on add products, single product, select which store you want to add it to, click on next, then enter the URL right here. You can see that the supplier source was automatically switched to Amazon in the region United States. Now I can publish it directly to my store or click on edit now quick, so that I could optimize this product before adding it to my store. And it's always best to optimize because we do not want to use the same titles on eBay that everyone else is using. So when it comes to eBay titles, there's a few things that you can do here to get the best product titles available. And the best way to optimize your title is by using the power of artificial intelligence, which is now included inside your AutoDS subscription. So you can see right here, we've got this long title. It's using up way too many letters, way more than we can out of the 80. It's, it's at 181 letters. And it's the same title that we have on our supplier's website. It's the same title that other dropshippers are using. And remember that on eBay, the title is super important. This is how people are actually gonna find your product. They're gonna search on eBay for something. And if those keywords also show up on your eBay title, there's a really high chance that your product is gonna show up right in front of their faces after they make the search. And that is how you're gonna get free organic traffic and sales to your store. So work on your titles. So here I've got the option, optimize title with AI. I can simply click on it. And I can tell AutoDS, hey, can you please automate my title or my description or the title and description for this product, make it sound more professional, make it sound more sellable, make it sound funny, choose a balanced temperature, more creative and so forth. Then just write AI rewrite. And that is going to do all of the re rewriting for us. And that is going to generate a unique title and description for our stores. Artificial intelligence is what it's all about today. The second way to do it, if you want to do it manually, is by using the eBay title builder. It's completely free to use. And of course, I've got the link to it in the cheat sheet. So I'm going to open it right here. And this is our eBay title builder. 
just gonna scroll down a little bit and say I'm gonna sell on eBay.com, that's my marketplace. And what product are we selling? So these are LED fairy lights. So I'm just gonna search for fairy lights, that's what the product is. And now it's gonna show me the most search phrases for these keywords on eBay so that I can use those in my title. Of course, only the relevant words. So I can see that fairy lights has an average of almost 1.5 million searches per month. I have a grade for the competition and how many monthly sales there are for these keywords. And now here's how I can build my title. String fairy lights, is the way to start the title. So instead of fairy lights, let's see, we're going to use string fairy lights. Okay, I'm gonna remove the rest of the title and I'm gonna continue working my way up from here. Just make sure that the words are relevant. For example, I know that string is correct because we can see it right here in the supplier's title and image. And as we continue going down, for example, battery powered, I know that it's also battery powered, so I can also add that to the title. I can also click on it and it'll start creating the title for me right up here. Okay, and then I can just copy and paste the title here in the end. So you can use the eBay title builder if you don't wanna use the AI tool. These are the top two ways to create great titles and descriptions for your eBay listings, make them unique so that people can actually find your listings and that you'll also be different from the rest of your competition. You'll be better than them because you are not simply copying and pasting from your supplier's websites. So once we've got a good title, the category is automated for us inside String Lights, Fairy Lights on eBay. We've got tags, which is really good to have. If you wanna add more tags, of course you can, but these tags are good because when you'll have a lot of products inside your products page, and after a while, you'll wanna start analyzing how certain niches are selling for you, you can analyze a certain tag and see how that is performing. Then you've got the payment policies, shipping policies, all of which, whatever you create on eBay, will show down in these drop down menus, the country location, so where it's being shipped from. And we wanna have automation on like stock monitoring, price monitoring, automatic orders. I will talk about automatic orders soon. The description, which we can generate again using artificial intelligence. Now, in this case, there's only one variation, even though the listing has more variations, because in my AutoDS settings, I told it not to upload variations, but of course, you can have that on. And even a better idea is to look for other variations using other suppliers, other sellers. In this case, I'll keep it on Amazon, but you can even go to a completely different supplier. And let's say you want to also add this variation to your product page. So I'm going to copy the URL for this product and I'm going to head back to the variations. I'm going to click on add variant, add the link to the next variation that I want to add using any one of the other suppliers. In this case, it's still Amazon. And I'm going to click on add variant. Now what I'm going to get is a product page with two variations that no other dropshipper has. Once again, to stay unique, to stand out from the competition and be on top of everyone else. Next, we've got product images. So again, everything is being automated. This is one of the good things about automation. We do not need to spend time on this and item specifications, all of which are completely automated. I did not add these one by one. All of these were automated when I imported this product. And there are some things that you can add manually. Like for example, for the type, I can add string fairy lights. And if I go back to the variants, we can see that the other variation was added. So now I've got a product page with two different types of variations that again, no other seller has. Now, another thing that I did not mention is that you also have free templates when you're using AutoDS. So here, for example, I can click on edit templates and this will take me to the templates page on AutoDS. So as you can see right here, I can use a Black Friday template, Halloween if it's Halloween, Christmas if it's Christmas, and all types of other templates completely free to use for my eBay store. So this will make my product page look much, much better when we're using such templates. So for example, let's just take one of these templates, like let's say this one right here. I'm gonna click on add my template and I can also edit that template if I want to change the text around and things like that but I'm not going to go over that now and back on the drafts page I can click on selected template and I can just choose the template that I just duplicated so I can just click on my template or pets template or whatever you're using and then your listing will look so much better okay so here for example I finished filling in all the information I didn't finish optimizing my title but let's just keep it as is and I'm going to click on save and import because I want you to see what it looks like once it's actually on my eBay store. So it's being imported right now as we speak, and in just a couple of seconds, it will be there. Okay, so product has been imported to your store. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm gonna click on the eBay link right here. I've got the supplier link here. So if I click on it, it's gonna take me to the product page on my supplier's website, which in this case is Amazon. And I can click on eBay right here, and this will take me to my eBay link. So here's a product that I automated to my eBay store. This is what it looks like. Here's my eBay seller account. This is my feedback, 99.4%. 
And as I scroll down, we can see all of the item specifications, everything that was automated for me, and of course, the chosen template that I used. You can see this cool, nice little hovering effect. The template was absolutely free. And here is my product page. So everything here was automated, everything here was simple, and it only took me a couple of minutes. That is how you can easily import products and also optimize them all through automation, all through using AutoDS. So that is the quick product importer. There are more import options. I'm not going to dive into it now because it's going to take, again, too much time. There's so much to learn, so much to go over, which you'll need to do on your own time because you do have all of the information in this video and also inside the cheat sheet. But basically, you can do much more than that. For example, I can use the AutoDS extension right here, search for all of the products that I want to add. Let's say I want to add all of these dog beds, right? I want to test them out. I want to test the market. I'm going to click on extract. And now all of these products are inside this extension. I can continue on to the next page, continue extracting, then click on export as CSV. Now a CSV file was downloaded onto my computer. Next, I'm just going to go to AutoDS, click on add products, multiple products. And here I can add all of their product IDs right here or their URLs with a line break. Or I can click on upload CSV and drag and drop that CSV file right here. Or click on it to open up my browser window. Click on that export file. It's going to process in just a couple of seconds and it's complete. I'm going to click on add as a draft and boom, all of those 30, 60, 100 products will be added to my drafts page in just a couple of seconds. So again, automation is king and I haven't even gotten started. Okay, we did a lot up until now. Let's all take a deep breath. So we created our eBay accounts. We connected our payment methods. We did our product research. We connected with suppliers. We connected with AutoDS for automation. We uploaded our first couple of products, the second one through automation. And of course, that is all after we increased our selling limits. And we've optimized our product page to make it look really good and stand out from the rest of the competition. Now we're going to talk about eBay marketing methods, both free and paid methods to get your products, to get your store in front of a larger target audience. Even though we're going to get free organic traffic to our stores by uploading the right products and optimizing our titles and product pages so that our listings will get to the first page on eBay when someone searches for a similar product. With marketing efforts, we're going to get even more traffic and even more sales. And before that, I'm going to reveal the next winning product as I promised throughout this video. So let's check out eBay winning product number four. I'm going to open the supplier link and the eBay store link. So as we can see, this backstretching device has been working wonders for online sellers. And we can see this product right here on Amazon being sold on eBay for $12, even though he's just buying it for 10. So this guy it's not really here to profit much, even though he did sell 46 units. So even if he made $1 in profit, he made only $46 selling this product. It's actually not enough. It is a very trendy product, and I can show you many more examples of profitable sellers who sold this product. But this is a profit potential example of what you should not be doing. Even if you're going to make sales, we're not here to make 50 cents to $1 profit per order. And I'm this close to showing you my sales on my AutoDS account, on my eBay stores, with the actual profit potential that you should be profiting. I'm gonna go over that really, really soon. But first, let's go over eBay marketing and promotions. So we've got promoted listing standard and promoted listings advanced. The difference between them is on standard, we're telling eBay, hey, promote our listings, but I only wanna pay you after I make a sell from your promotion. And on promoted listings advanced, we're telling eBay, promote our listings, I'll pay you in advance. I'll give you this daily budget in advance and show it to as many people as you can within that budget. So using promoted listings advanced, we're paying eBay in advance to promote our listings. Even if we don't make any sales, we'll have to owe eBay some money. So that's the downside. The upside is that they'll show it to a lot more people than the conventional promoted listings method. So let me show you exactly what I mean. Under promoted listing standard, I've got a blog article linked right here for promoted listing standard and promoted listings advanced so that you can learn about each one, dive deep into it and see which strategy is right for you. Under promoted listings advanced or eBay PPC, pay-per-click, of course, you also have the embedded video. This shows you step-by-step -step how to start a PPC campaign, the PPC campaign that I ran, the keywords that I got from it, the sales that I got from it, the profits, the expenses, and everything else. So you have all of that in this long PPC eBay article. Okay, so if you want to learn how to do that, you can go there. But let me show it to you on my eBay store. I hovered over marketing and I clicked on advertising dashboard and I got greeted with this dashboard right here. So you can see that I'm running promoted listing standard and how much I got from that so far. So of course I can change that. I can see what happened in the last seven days, last 14 days. In this case, let's just take a look at the last 31 days or the last month. 
So you can see that my impressions went up by over 23%, the listing clicks went up by 34%, the sold count, the sales and so forth. And everything that we're reading here is from promoted listings standard, meaning I only paid eBay for these 24 sales in the last month, only after I got these sales because I promoted these listings. So all of these stats are only from promoted listings and we can see I've got an average sold ad rate of 5%. These are the ad fees that I paid, the sales that I got, the click-through rating and so forth. And as I scroll down here to this chart in the last 31 days, so this purple line represents the organic impressions that I'm getting every day. So for example, on this day, I got 26,000 organic impressions and almost 3,000 promoted listings impressions. Now this is again, promoted listing standard. This means that I'm giving eBay a set percentage. For example, let me go inside the campaign and show you exactly what I did there. So this campaign right here that has about 1500 listings inside. Here is my strategy for this campaign. So I'm giving a fixed ad rate of 5%. Now the higher percent you give eBay on the fixed ad rate, the more people they're gonna show this listing to. So if you give them 10%, they're gonna show it to more people, but you're gonna have to owe them 10% of the transaction price if they make you a sell from that promoted listing. So I play around with it. Sometimes I go with one to two, sometimes I go to five to six. I play around with it according to myself. If sales are low, I increase my fixed ad rate. If the sales are really good, I kind of lower it because I want to pay as few as a fee as possible on eBay. So that's a little bit about promoted listings and the difference between standard and advanced. Now more ways to promote your eBay store and I'm going to make a sale right now just to show you how this works. But another way to do it instead of the promoted listings is by creating a coupon for your buyer. So you can create coupons, you can send it to them, you can send it to people who are watching, you can send offers, you can receive offers, you can create volume pricing, you can create sales events. And best offer is a great way to make sales. And I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna show you an example of how I make a sale because I just got an offer on my other store. And this again is one thing that you can do to make more sales. So let me connect to my other eBay store really quick. Okay, and here you can see some of the stats for this store. But in this case, I'm going to go to the selling. And here in my notifications, I can see that I've got some offers. So I'm gonna click on that so I can see what offers people are sending me. Okay, and I've got these two offers right here. So I'm gonna click on each one so that I can respond to the offer. This offer expires in 14 hours and this one expires in four hours. I want to make a sale on one of these. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so I've got this product here and I'm selling it for $35.99 and this buyer made an offer for $29. Now that's a little bit too low. Let's see what the other one got. So I'm selling this item here for $35.99 and I've got an offer for $33.49. Now, because my profit percentage is over 50% on my items, I'm pretty sure I can make the sale here. And I haven't went over my break even in my profit percentages yet. Let me show you that now and close the sale. Here on my AutoDS account, I'm gonna go to the settings. And here are my supplier settings. For example, when I'm dropshipping from Amazon, I'm gonna click on the pricing settings for my products. And as you can see, I set a 15% break even for my products. Because you saw that eBay charges you category fees varying between 9% to 15%, plus I've got the international selling fee. So I put my break even at 15%. On top of that, I ask for another 60%, 60% additional profit. Now, why did I put 60% for example, and not 50% because that's actually what I'm good with? Because we'll most likely also pay for tax when purchasing the products from our suppliers websites. So for example, if you're dropshipping from Amazon and the product costs $10, you're probably gonna get charged another 50 cents or $1 tax. So it's actually gonna come out to be $11. So that extra 10% that I could pay for tax, I added right here an additional profit. If I don't pay for tax, then well, even for the best, I just made more profit. Now, one more thing that I like about dropshipping on eBay US is that eBay will collect the sales tax from the buyer. Now, I'm not talking about the source tax that you're gonna pay your supplier when you're purchasing the product, but when you're dropshipping to the US, the US government is gonna want that sales tax. So same goes for the United States. And what I like about eBay US is when you sell a product, for example, for $20, eBay will charge your buyer $21 or $22 and you're going to get that tax money and then eBay is going to deduct it from you so that they can pay that to the US government at the end of the year. So you don't have to worry about filing for sales tax in the United States if you're dropshipping to them through eBay. It's one of the things that I love about it. It saves you that headache. So in any case, I set my break even fees to 15% and an additional 60% in profit. Okay, so let's take a look at that product that I got an offer on. I'm just going to copy the product ID 
and I'm gonna paste it on AutoDS to see exactly how much I'm profiting for that product. Okay, so I'm gonna put the product ID right here and look at that, I just made a sale right now while I'm recording this video. But in any case, let's click on this product. Okay, then I'm gonna open up the editor to see exactly how much profit I'm making and if I could sell it for that price that the buyer wants. So I'm gonna click right here on the variation and I can see right here that I'm buying it for $19, I'm selling it for $36, and the offer that he made was for, let's see, $33.49. So if I sell it for $33.49, what will be my profit? And as we can see right here, I'm making almost $10 in profit if I sell it for that price. So yeah, it's definitely worth it, and I'm going to make that sale right now. So I'm just gonna go to this offer for $33.49, I'm gonna click on Accept Offer, Okay, then it's just gonna review my settings. Are you sure you wanna accept it for this price? I'm gonna click on accept again. Okay, and boom, I just made another sell. You have made this buyer the winner. You accepted his offer and I just made another sell. Okay, so if I go to my sales page, I'm gonna click on my orders. Of course, I can see all my orders through AutoDS, but I just wanna show it to you right now from here. So this is my newest order just from this moment using the promotion method that I just showed you by allowing buyers to send you offers for your products. Now, again, guys, keep in mind, Everything that I'm going over in this video, everything that I'm showing you are strategies that I'm using on my stores. I'm getting sales from it and I'm showing you everything in this video. So I hope you appreciate it. Like and share this video, subscribe to our channel if you appreciate the value, access to this cheat sheet with everything that I'm going over. Simply comment hashtag eBay2024. Let me know what you learned in this video, what your top takeaway is, and I'll send you this cheat sheet. Okay, so we've got those marketing methods. You can learn more about it in the links below. And another thing that eBay recently added is social media marketing. Okay, so this is relatively new to eBay. You can connect your social media accounts or create new ones as you can see right here. Then just click on the link button here to link your Facebook account or Instagram or Pinterest and start promoting your products, create posts through eBay and drive traffic to your eBay store using social media. So that's eBay's newest marketing method and you can start taking advantage of that right now. Now, after you do that, after you list your products, you did your research, you found your suppliers, you listed your products, you did your marketing efforts. Now, inevitably, the orders are gonna start coming in. So now it's actually time to start fulfilling our orders. Speaking of orders, let me show you some of my most recent orders. So here on AutoDS, I clicked on orders here on the left side and I can see all of my orders. I've got over 7,000 orders right here because all of my stores are connected to this account. But in any case, here are the products that were ordered. Here's the date. Here is the order status, the estimated arrival, the prices and the profits. So I told you that I just got an order while I was talking a couple of minutes ago. I'm not talking about the offer that I just accepted. I'm gonna see that in a couple of minutes here once it synchronizes. So I've got $10 in profit right there. And another order from earlier today. As you can see right here, I bought it for $30.80. I sold it for $105 with another $5 in promotion fees. I got $52 in real profit from this morning's order. And let me show you exactly how I was able to purchase it for $30 and sell it for 105. So I'm gonna click on the supplier's link right here. And you can see that the product actually costs $57.99, but there is a 50% coupon. So if it costs $58 and you get a 50% coupon, then yeah, that's a lot of extra profit in your pocket. That's how I was able to make $53 in profit here. And as you can see, my profit is usually pretty high. So $15 here, $10 for these orders, $31 for this one, uh, some eights and some sevens, $18 here. So I usually like to play around the high profit zone and that is simply what the dropshipping business model can give you. Okay, so let's get back to it, orders. When you get an order, you'll see it on your eBay store and inside the orders column. But I like to see everything in AutoDS because everything is simply organized here. So here I can see all of my pending orders and those that got sent out and so forth. Every order comes with statuses. So as soon as an order comes in, you have the option of whether to process it manually or automatically. And of course, automation is the winner here. But manually simply means going to your supplier's website, purchasing the product and shipping it to your buyer. Okay, this means that the product is not going through your house, it's going directly from the supplier to your buyer and you will keep the profit between your source price and your selling price. However, you will not be able to scale this way and if and when you do reach 5, 10, 15 plus orders per day, you will spend all day just processing orders. You might make some mistakes and some orders send it to the wrong addresses. I've been a victim of this plenty of times and once you add in automation, you will not be able to go back to manually doing it. So order automation means as soon as an order comes in, it will get processed automatically so that you won't have to do anything. It'll get sent out to your buyers even while you're sleeping at night and tracking information will also be updated automatically. Now there are two types of order automation methods in AutoDS. One is called automatic orders, the other is called fulfilled by AutoDS. 
I've got the links to them of course in the cheat sheet below. And the difference simply between them is through automatic orders, your orders will be automated using your buyer accounts. So for example, I can add my buyer account settings on AliExpress inside AutoDS. And every time I get an order from the AliExpress supplier, I can have that automated for me. So AutoDS will send the order out automatically using my AliExpress buyer account and my payment settings inside AutoDS. On the other hand, we've got Fulfilled by AutoDS. Both ways you'll get automatic tracking information updates as soon as tracking is available from your suppliers. However, Fulfilled by AutoDS will not use your buyer accounts, and this is the much better option, especially if you're dropshipping from retailers like Amazon and Walmart, who could lock your buyer accounts once you have multiple orders per day to different addresses. They'll see that you're dropshipping, and they'll be like, hey, you know, we're a huge retailer. We don't really need you as a dropshipper, so we're going to lock your buyer account from making any additional purchases. When you're using Fulfilled by AutoDS, AutoDS has their own buyer accounts, so you don't have to worry about your accounts getting locked everything will be processed through AutoDS. All you have to do is opt in for automatic orders by going to your plans and add-ons, adding the orders processor for $8 per month, and that is well worth it. You can make back that profit from just one order. And once you have that on, just go to your settings and under supplier settings, click on the right supplier that you want to automate your orders with, click on orders. And here you have process orders using the Fulfilled by AutoDS service. If you want to use Fulfilled by AutoDS, if you only want to use automatic orders, just have that checked in. If you have both checked in, then as soon as an order comes in for Fulfilled by AutoDS, it'll get fulfilled automatically using the Fulfilled by AutoDS service without you having to intervene. If you only have Fulfilled by AutoDS filled in, then you'll have the option to change the order status from pending and send it to auto order, just like we have in this example here. So let me go back to my order screen. I've got this order right here and it's in pending. It didn't get sent to automatic orders right away because I didn't have both of them toggled in. So in this case, I just want to make sure that I have a balance right up here. Okay, you can load your balance from a few different payment methods like credit card or Payoneer. And here you can choose exactly how much you want to load up. In this case, I have about $62 loaded in and this order costs $17.99. So I can fulfill it right away by clicking on pending and sending it to auto order. Now the fulfilled by AutoDS service is gonna take care of this order for me. As I can hover over this icon, you can see that it says completed by the fulfilled by AutoDS service. So the order will get automated. And once that happens, it'll move to the ordered status and I'll get the message of when it's arriving right here. So you can see this product, for example, is arriving on Friday. And I can also click on the Amazon screenshot to actually see the order status on Amazon. That, for example, is if you're using Amazon as your supplier. And I can see again when it's going to arrive and what the date is. So if the buyer asks what's going on, I can let him know. And of course, once shipping information is available, that also is going to be updated automatically also on your eBay store, so you don't have to do any of that. And again, I got this order right here. I can also send it to auto order. Once it gets ordered, it'll be an ordered status with the order ID from your supplier, shipped once tracking information is available, and delivered once it's delivered to your buyer. Everything completely automated. One other thing that I would like to talk about when it comes to order automation is that you can also send automatic messages to your buyers. So back in the order screen, when I'm using eBay as my store and a supported supplier, I can scroll down to the automatic messages to customers. And here the system is gonna send messages to my customers automatically after an order was placed, after tracking information is available, after the order was delivered to send you a positive feedback and a gift message. If you're using Amazon, you can send out your products as gifts. This way your buyer will not get a receipt and they'll even get a gift message with a nice little message from you. Of course, you can edit all of these messages using this edit function right here. Turn on and off whatever messages you do or do not want to send. Save that and automatic messages will get sent to your buyers. So that is why order automation is key and you will not be able to scale without it. Now, another thing when using Fulfilled by AutoDS is we also offer cashback using some supported suppliers. So link to it, of course, inside the cheat sheet and of course, what type of cashback you can get from them. Now, product sourcing is something that I haven't talked about yet and it's super super, super important. What this means is you can take any product that you're selling from any supplier from any region and ask the AutoDS system to source that product for you. This is gonna let the system find you a better supplier with faster shipping, with a cheaper price so that you can make more profit and deliver it more quickly to your buyers. You can do it on all of your products and I especially encourage doing it on your best sellers so that again, you can ship quicker and get better pricing. 
you have this option inside the AutoDS platform. So as you can see right here under orders, I can make a sourcing request, but I'm not gonna do it now. I'm not gonna make a sourcing request. And by the way, another order just popped up. So you see, I already have three orders today. And this is the order that I just won from the buy it now. So while I'm recording this video, I already had two orders coming in and that is the automated dropshipping business model. So again, take advantage of product sourcing, get faster shipping quotes, find new suppliers to work with, and that is gonna make you bigger, better, more sales and profit. Automatic messages, we already talked about it, but you have more information inside the AutoDS cheat sheet. This is what the sourcing looks like. And I've also attached a chart to the cheat sheet showing you exactly what suppliers you can automate your orders with and what is included inside of that. Another thing that I haven't mentioned is tracking conversion. This is really important when it comes to dropshipping on eBay because sometimes you can use suppliers like Amazon who supply with tracking numbers that you simply cannot use on eBay. I mean, you can use it on eBay, but eBay will not be able to show what's going on with the tracking events because they don't support those tracking numbers like TBA tracking numbers from Amazon. So what you can do here is convert it using either Blue Care Express or Aqualine all included inside AutoDS. So if I go back to AutoDS, I'll go to my settings and under supplier order settings, I can convert my tracking right here, either all orders to Blue Care Express, only Amazon shipping carrier or, or those AMZ tracking numbers to Blue Care Express or to Aquiline or QTrack, both that come with zip code masquerade. Why is zip code masquerade good? Because this way you will not be breaching eBay's item location policy. What this means is eBay wants you to ship out your products from the same item location that you specified when you uploaded the listing. So when you add a listing to eBay, you're filling in where this order is going to be shipped from, including a zip code. So it's not enough to say, oh, I'm gonna ship it from the USA. You need to provide a zip code within the USA. And once you upload tracking information, eBay will scan the first place that the order was tracked from. And if that tracking information does not have the same zip code as what you have in your item listing, you'll be breaching their item location policy. Policy. Now, don't worry, this will not get your account suspended, but they will flag your account. And this means that your traffic impressions will drop. Now, don't worry. I know this sounds bad, but my store has been flagged since 2020 or 2019. I don't remember exactly when it was April 19th or something. And it happened to tens of thousands of other drop shippers. But the more listings you'll have, the more traffic you'll get to your stores. So from the 400 listings I had back then, the sales that I was making were OK. But today, with thousands of listings, I'm making much more sales, even though my accounts are flagged. So don't worry about it. But if you want to avoid that, you can use Aqualine or QTrack. And this will make sure that the first tracking event will have the same zip code that you have in your item listing for that item that was ordered. Now, I know it could sound a little bit confusing if you're hearing it for the first time, but again, I've left the links to it inside the eBay dropshipping cheat sheet. Just remember that all three of these tracking conversions will make the tracking supported on eBay. And it's really important to do this because if a customer opens up an item not received case saying, hey, the product didn't show up at my door, then you'll be able to actually prove to them that the product did arrive by showing them the tracking events. But if you're not converting your tracking numbers and eBay does not support the tracking number that you uploaded, you won't be able to prove it with tracking events and you'll be in some sort of trouble. So more information on that, of course, inside the links in the cheat sheet. Now dealing with cases and returns. It's really important on eBay to make sure that you're on top of your cases and returns. This is not gonna be the biggest part of your business, but you do have to understand how to deal with this. Now, in my eBay account, I have never lost a case that I shouldn't have lost. If I send out my item, I prove that it got sent out using tracking conversions or tracking events. If the product didn't reach my buyer because the supplier made some kind of mistake, I'm gonna get reimbursed from my supplier so I can send a refund to the buyer. In either case, we do not want eBay to intervene inside the cases. When a buyer opens up a case, we wanna be able to resolve it with the buyer. This this will affect our total seller account. So let me show you exactly what I mean. Let me go inside my seller account information. So I'm gonna hover over performance. I'm gonna click on seller level. And here you can see that my seller level is above standard. My transaction defect rate is zero. My late shipment rate is 3%, just 19 out of 600 transactions. And cases closed without seller resolutions, zero. This is really important. Tracking uploaded on time and validated, 91%. And again, this is all really important. You got the transaction in sales and the return rate is just below 3%. Okay, so these are very good standards that you want to live by especially having a 0% transaction defect rate. If a buyer opens up a case against you and you're not able to resolve it with them and they ask eBay to step in and eBay favors the buyer, not you, the seller, you're gonna get a transaction defect rate. Now with my over seven years of dropshipping on eBay, I have never gotten a transaction defect rate because I take care of my cases, I take care of my buyers, and I've never had to send a refund without getting one myself, okay? So make sure every day to go to your eBay account, check your email, make sure that no case 
cases are being opened against you. And if they are, simply go and take care of them. Buyer says they didn't receive the product, go check with your supplier. Buyer says the item received damage, send them a return label from your supplier. Take care of your cases on time and don't let eBay intervene. Now, sometimes eBay can intervene and decide that you, the seller, are right. But if they decide that you're wrong, that's another transaction defect, right? Nobody wants that. So again, check your eBay messages every day, respond quickly to cases, do not lose cases or allow the buyer to ask eBay to step in so that if you lose, you'll get a transaction defect and upload a return label for eligible cases. One more resource that can help you out here is the AutoDS eBay customer support management system. Of course, I've got a link to it, but let me actually show you what it looks like. So here on AutoDS, I'm gonna click on customer support here on the left side, and it's going to collect all of the customer messages that I'm receiving and sending. So here I can see all of the messages from my customers that I'm receiving, messages that I'm sending, messages that I'm getting from eBay, cases and so forth. I can see all of that here and I can also respond to them. So for example, I clicked on this message here and you can kind of see a chat between us, kind of like a chat screen and I can continue replying from here instead of doing it through eBay. And I can also create chat snippets to make it even easier, especially on repetitive messages that I send my buyers. Okay, so you can take care of all of your customer support management all within AutoDS. Now next, I wanna talk a little bit about dealing with flagged accounts. We're nearing the end, but this is really important. I did mention flagged accounts. What it means and if that happens to you you're gonna get a message that looks like this as i got it in my ebay account there is evidence that you're purchasing from our retailers and other marketplace websites because they want you to work with wholesale suppliers they want you to work with private suppliers like we have inside the AutoDS system but if you're going to work with the retailers make sure that before you do that you got your limits up as high as possible so that when they do flag your accounts you won't be able to raise your limits anymore but it won't really matter because you have thousands of limits and that's more than enough to make substantial amounts of profits as long as your product research is on point. So take the tips that I talked about in this video and also use this resource right here, how to work with eBay flagged accounts. Besides that, make sure to maintain a high eBay seller level. I talked about that. I showed you my seller level on my eBay account. Make sure that you're either top rated or above standard. Below standard is not good. Your account is in risk of suspension and that will happen if you have transaction defect rates. Keep that around 0 to 1%. Late shipment rates, keep that below 5%. Cases closed without seller resolution, keep it below 2%. Tracking uploaded on time and validated, keep it above 70%. And your return rate, keep it below 8%. 2 to 4% is the optimal range that you want to have there. And the last thing that you're going to do is automate and enjoy scaling your dropshipping business. There's many things inside AutoDS that I did not talk about, like the option to add virtual assistants to help you with your account. And I can see that right here under settings slash users. Here I can add virtual assistants by adding their names and their email addresses giving them access to one or several stores and what we want to give them privilege to. For example, to, to view our dashboard, to view and edit our products, to delete them, to edit our settings and so forth. And this way you can hire a virtual assistant to automate your business even more. But even without that, with AutoDS, you're going to get price and stock monitoring. So if the price changes on your supplier's websites or if the stock status changes, the same changes will be applied to your store so that you will not lose profit and you will not sell products that are out of stock. You've also got quick product importing as I've showed you, automatic orders and tracking, product sourcing, marketplace, private suppliers, winning products hub, all of the things we already talked about, AI title description generator, free eBay templates, plus there's also the AutoDS yes Academy, which I did not show you, so here it is. And here you're gonna get tons of free, free information, free courses, free video tutorials, as you can see right here, I'm scrolling through it and there's only so much that we can learn here. Right now I'm under eBay, you've got all of these eBay videos. And of course this video is also gonna be added to our academy. And again, this simply has tons and tons of videos and also courses. So for example, I can click on learn more here and I'm gonna be taken to AutoDS's website to take a full eBay dropshipping course from A to Z. As you can see right here, split down into lessons. So you can just choose whatever lesson you wanna learn click on it and strengthen your knowledge there. All of this information is absolutely free as long as you start your business right after watching this video, take action, register your eBay store, start your product research, connect automation, import your products and start making sales. And I've added, of course, additional resources inside the eBay cheat sheet. Guys, from here, it's all about scaling and automation. Now, I did not go over the rest of the eBay winning products. I'm going to attach this to the dropshipping cheat sheet. I'm gonna put it all the way down here on the bottom. 
So again, if you want access to this cheat sheet, all you have to do is comment hashtag eBay 2024. Let me know what you learned in this video. What is your top takeaway? And I will send you this 2024 cheat sheet with everything that you need for 2024. Now, as I promised, this is going to be the only eBay dropshipping video that you'll need for 2024. And now I hope that you can see why. Go learn from the rest of the resources inside the eBay cheat sheet. Let me know what you thought about this video. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Good job on making it this far. It shows that you are serious in starting your eBay dropshipping business and success will follow. Start implementing from the rules that you learned in this video that I've gotten from over seven years of dropshipping on eBay. Good luck and I cannot wait to hear about your success story in the comments below. Good luck dropshipping on eBay and I'll see you in the next video.